So after seeing a video of this piece in action, I got a better understanding of how it works, what it's used for, and also what this piece is actually shaped like. It appears that my eyes lied to me. Like I always say, when you follow a reference, you're always wrong. But we'll bring over the screenshot that I took of my pure ref, and we can definitely see what shape we have going on. So it's really not that bad, but also this shape is completely inaccurate. And you know, those sort of things will bug me. You know, I was just like, what shape is that, man? I can't just be letting shapes whoop, whoop me, you know? So here we are guys back in the game. So there's a couple of ways we could do this. We could do this the easy way or the hard way. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do it the hard way. Mm. The second I say that I just saw all the paths involved with the hard way and this isn't going to be fun, but let's just do this. You know, I should just treat it like therapy. Just start complaining to you guys. Just be like, guys, it's so terrible. You know, we have to go in and we have to make these mesh corrections and the mesh just is subdivided and the subdivision is showing in edit mode and this is showing in edit mode. And we don't want to see any of that in edit mode. We do want to flatten it on the X. And let me make sure my keystrokes are being displayed as well. But yeah, I was looking at this piece. I was like, man, I feel like a dummy. This piece is way off. So we are going to get back on track because, you know, like I, like I always say, man, if we're going to cut corners, let's uh, cut the corners that matter. Okay, we do want crease. I don't know what I was thinking before. We do want our crease happening. And I am going to just get rid of this face, this face, and this face. You know, it's like Tetris. I'm just, I'm not thinking so much of the move I'm doing at this moment, but really the moves that I'm about to be facing because it's always the future. You know, it's like, we've come from the future to make you pay like oh snap what did I do it's like well you remember when you pressed F like 30 minutes ago you shouldn't have done that you know so we're just getting in here and just forcing sub D to work with us this isn't gonna work However, my favorite five song is playing, so it's hard to not just fade out. Just playing with the auto smooth, and we see that it does have a transition, just not sure how far this comes out, but I'm assuming that it's far. But you know, it's always far. And this is a convergence point, so we definitely cannot move that. Let us press Alt S just to push this out so it's really thin. You know, and the more that we push it, the weirder things are gonna get with this, but we're still in control, sort of. Not that control, this level of control. And we're just sliding our edges out until we get something slightly resembling what we have going on here. So for this piece, I do see something happening in the center. So let us press, actually, we're gonna need to reevaluate how we bring this out because we made a bit of a mess. So I'm just going to bring it all the way back in and we'll GG, we'll press E in order to make it even with this one. G, G, E. Double tap G to slide. We'll bring in a loop, but not me. And then we'll just bring that out as well. Grab this, pop it out. You know, really just looking at the reference and just wondering, you know, how close is close? How close is enough? 
what will satiate me enough to allow me to go back to fighting against the Mongol Empire. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. I actually finished beating Ghost of Tsushima, so I should think about that samurai armor. And this thing looks so deep in this image. Yo, you could scoop a bean in that thing. Eat a little bean out of it. I mean, these are the only terms I can understand. In terms of potatoes. Like, hey man, I'll give you 6,000 potatoes if you do this job. I'm in. Yeah, how many potatoes is that? It's a lot of potatoes. It's too many potatoes. You'll start getting rotten potatoes. Might as well start making vodka, you know. Anyways let us I am going to try bring in another point to meet this just to see if we can relieve some of the stress and also we want to place the bevel before the subdivision or else things will get weird let's press alt v look at the wireframe and there's a chance we probably need to pull this back just a little bit and we may not even have to deal with that but we do this area is just going to be a pain because if we crease it it's just not going to be very nice to us but if we try to bevel it in order to preserve it for subdivision we see that this double convergence is just in fact, this whole area is kind of losing the plot as far as uh, planarization goes, so let's try to deal with that. You know, just because I see it in a picture doesn't mean I can model it easily. If anything, it's going to be a pain. Kicking and screaming. I mean, look at all these broken, not uh, frontal edges. So let's try it again. At least now we have something a little more planar. And how do we solve this? If we add additional topology, we start sacrificing some curvature. So I'm thinking it would actually be easier if we modeled this without subdivision. Let's turn off bevel for just a brief moment. And we're just looking at our subdivision. Let's crease these two as well. Let's crease this one. And I'm just going to apply the subdivision. Maybe a uh, go back one. Might have got a little uh, crazy there. Sorry about that. Let's change it to uh, subdivision level one, then apply it. And I'm going to dissolve that edge. And we're just going to bring this loop back in. If you don't apply, the modifiers in the right order these are sort of things that happen but you know I just like GG sliding to just fix things and then dissolving loops that are redundant and you know us applying this level of subdivision allows us to kind of renegotiate with a, a few more points just to see if we can get it because it's all we can do we failed at the level that we had before topologically so the best we can do now is come at it with a little bit more on the sacrifice. You know, we're sacrificing literally lambs and goats to this thing to try to get our shape out of it. But it probably wants more. It probably wants um, probably them firstborn children. I know I'm probably sounding like Alex Jones here, but. You know, we're breaking the conditioning. These points aren't even congruent. It just looks terrible. We don't even have to be even like this, but it just gives me sanity. And this is what we are looking at as our part. So ignore this. You know, really unprofessional of me, but just have to show you what happens when you don't apply your modifiers by reminding myself what happens when you don't apply your modifiers in the right order. And just really giving this point a look because I feel like it needs to come in. I know you guys watch me just have my way with circles so much. It's, I know it's just terrible. 
someone should stop me. But no one stops me. Y'all y'all didn't even stop me whenever I was giving the circles way too small of a resolution and then baking. You know, terrible result. Like I'm gonna be up late <laughs> dealing with baking just because of the conundrum I've been struck with. But that looks a little bit closer to this than what we were dealing with before. You know, we could probably at least Alt S just push that out just to you know, add a little sexiness to it. You know, I know it's a hydraulic pump. How sexy can it be? Enter's real sexy. You know, wake up in bed next to a couple of these babies. You're pretty lucky. I mean, they're kind of expensive. But we're just going to just get in here and pretend like, you know, that's the thing about CT, right? You're always modeling stuff you can't afford. You couldn't afford this pump. In fact, I'm just curious. Let's find out the price of this pump. So when we look at our actuators, we see that our prices are quite pricey. You know, pretty much the price of a computer. Might have to put an actuator in my next computer. However, on eBay, actuators are rather cheap. You know, not saying that you should just go out and just get any old actuator, but you know, just looking at these things, just... Never mind. Let's actually get back to work. Um, going too deep into being humorous, sorry. So let us continue on. And at this point, we need a circle. And we're on the high, so let's treat the high like the high. Let's also snap the cursor to the correct location. And we will insert a cylinder. 32 rounds is a lot, but also reducing it to like eight is really dramatic. So let us try aligning this to view and we'll scale it down. And we have no idea what it looks like, you know, outside of local mode. So let's just scale it up. And it looks like a cap on this side. I mean, I'm not sure what I'm looking at. I assume I'm looking at start at threads. On this side, it looks like it's a lot shorter. On this one, I, I suppose it's actually very short. I'm trying to rationalize not, uh, not having to move it because I don't want to move it. You know, that'd be life. So let's um let's do something weird. We're just gonna move the points individually and just ignore the fact that by doing that we are skewing the holy hell out of the ingon cap that's on top. And for only twelve minutes into this video, we're not doing too bad. You know, too hard on myself. Let us just take these two and we will union them together, which will mess up our sorting. And that's fine. We'll just fix it. And we want to apply our mirror mod and then apply our boolean. We don't want to apply our bevel though. We're not, we're not crazy people. But we do want to press D inside of Alt X mirror and hit it with a bisect. However, not a bisect. We actually want to Alt scroll and go to bisect mod and do a bisect mod instead. So now it's just the cleanup phase, which I assure you is, for me, it's easier and easier every time. These decisions, they get easier. It's like, which geo is important? Well, I'll tell you, it's definitely not these loose points stranded out in space. Those points mean nothing to us. But the points that do matter, they matter. Like over here, there's a double. That matters. It matters we get it the heck out of here. Let's press E. You know, E is such a beauty. I feel bad not discovering it sooner. We're just going to protect this air. What am I doing? I'm thinking in terms of subdivision rules. And we're probably not even working inside that range at this time. Really trying to make these two meet. And I feel that that is at least suitable for this particular union. You know, a little bit of protection. And of course, we got to protect the other side as well. We'll press P inside of bevel so we can press A and make adjustments. And this is what our piece is looking like so far. So compared to this, we'll never be able to hold up to the majesty of, you know, I see a few dings in the metal though. 
So that means I'm gonna ding my metal. I'm gonna ding it good. You know, in the last video I was pretty, what's the right word? Uh, I guess conservative. I was pretty conservative with it. So this time I'm going to go in it a little bit more aggressively. Also, let's bring up the low layer as well. I'm gonna select this piece, this piece, and you know now that I got the high we're just gonna move this out and let's just name this file you know piston 04 underscore 4 incrementing incrementing it to the next level because this is the next level of us with this mesh also we want to just which which settings do we have You know what, we're just gonna eyeball it. Sometimes life is too short for a battle. They just wanna fight you. It's like, you know what, I ain't got time for that. So we have a bevel and a subdivision on it that kind of results in us having a mm, shape. I mean, I don't know if I like all that. I don't know if that's even tolerable. You know, the poly police are gonna get me. You know, led by Polly Pocket. I don't know if you guys remember playing with. Just kidding. No one, <laughs> no Mel's in my audience should be playing with Polly Pockets. <laughs> yeah, I'll just throw that on you guys. Be like, hey, you guys remember playing with Easy Bake Ovens? You know, I was actually so hungry as a kid though that I used to see those Easy Bake Oven commercials. Like, damn, those kids are cooking in their room. Those kids cooking in their room right now. I'm starving in my room. So let us shift A and we're just gonna add an empty. Or yeah, let's let's do this. We might as well make the uh thing animated, but I'm seriously not dealing with ABC files. Or maybe I'm maybe I am. I'ma say this. I, I prefer to know the answer. Even if I'm doing it off off camera. So we're just gonna put a driver in here, same one as before. Uh, pound COS, open parentheses, frame times 0 0.15, close parentheses. We'll press enter. And I'll also make this bigger so that way you can see exactly what I typed. Of course, there's a pound at the beginning, but you don't see it whenever you're editing it. But it's just a thing. <laughs> I mean, I don't know anything about math. However, the team is on the team I'm with everybody is immensely smarter than me at everything including math and so we'll just we're just gonna take these two and parent it and let's actually take this empty and we're gonna move it to high so we can experiment with it so I'm just going to add a transformation but before all of that we also want to Deal with our parenting over here as well. And so we can take this and actually parent it to this so that if we move the high, the low also moves. And that will just simplify our lives for what we're about to do. So let's eye drop the empty. And we're gonna map from, I don't know, 0.9, maybe negative 0.9 to 0.9. And we're gonna take the Z and map it to everything because it's the simplest thing for me. And let us bring it in. However, as I look at this, I think I should split this area off. You know, I'm pretty sure that part of this doesn't actually go in. I have to rewatch the video, chastise myself. But for our example, we're just gonna have to tolerate that inaccuracy. You know, not trying to make pistons people are able to you know, reproduce. So now we have this going in and out just to illustrate you know, how this thing operates. I'm not gonna get all crazy like the first piston and do a cutout of the inside because I, look, I saw the inside, I was like, ooh, painful. Uh, why, am, why, why, am I, why am I doing this? But, I do want to understand how these things work better. So at least now we've created a better high poly. So from this high, the low must be born. So I'm just going to shift D duplicate it. We're going to take it in local mode 
and we're going to make the low out of this. Ta-da, we're done. We made our, just kidding. Um, maybe there's reductions that can be done. Because, I mean, this circle is actually very dense. Even if I get rid of every other loop, I just start getting flashbacks of all the other times I was very cruel to circles and just got rid of their loops. And it doesn't have to be that way. But for us today, for us to have a low, there's got to be some sort of difference with the high. You know, maybe that's the dogma that I got to fight myself. I'm telling you, 3D is so full of dogmas, but they're also there to save us because you try to go off the reservation. You know, you're like, I'm going to start baking without cages. You know, maybe cages are a thing of the past now, but I am feeling like this asset is, needs a couple of cages just to get its normals right. But I'll be experimenting with that off camera until I get the results perfect, and then we'll be talking about revisiting it. However, I wanted to transition into content talking about exporting out decal machine and making assets with that that are, you know, all self-contained that you can, you know, get all the way up on Sketchfab. That would be cool, I think, to get all the way up. Extra loops, that's the main thing. Extra loops that you added, forget about it. You have to get rid of those. You know, they're right in front of your face. It's like all these security loops you added, However, these could help the bank. So let's leave it. In fact, all these loops that we have could be a benefit to us. I mean, what are we cutting this down to? Uh, 176 times four, so this thing's gonna be like 500. You know, what is too high? Maybe it is too high. Also, let's think about UVing at this point too. So I'm definitely going to mark a seam here. This just has to go. You know, we we're talking about reducing it. It just, it just can go. We'll also place a seam at the bottom, but let's continue and we'll double back for that. So I'm going to clear all the seams. And let's see, yeah, we definitely want a seam here. We're just thinking about how we want to unwrap this. I'm going to put the world's biggest seam along this, which I'm sure will be a regrettable decision, but I remember being able to do this sort of stuff and it was just, it was just good. You know, what happened? Did the, did the rules come back? Did the UV police realize that we were walling out and cut that off? I mean, what happened? I gotta reconnect with my previous understandings of these topics. There's mark and seams. We'll grab this, press U, unwrap just to see what we're looking at. We got a, a wrench over here. That's when you know you did good, when you start unwrapping and they turn into tools. And I really think all of these are suitable at this point. So you unwrap, eh, suitable. I mean, don't worry about the proportions and stuff like that because we just want to just make sure that the islands, okay, so this island is a, uh, it's a wave, bro. So let's, um, you know, turn that into a grid. And with all of this selected, we are just going to pack these islands, you know, for no reason at all. We're also going to assign it the material UV and we're going to exit local mode with it still selected and we're going to move it to the low. And this is the piece that we had. This is the piece we're replacing it with. This piece still fits in the center because we kept it. And now we have a much nicer hydraulic piece going, or at least for the center piece. I mean, that thing is the thing sticking it out in your face. I mean, not to be vulgar, but this is the phallus of the hydraulic piece. And, you know, thus it must stick out with pride. I mean, that sounds terrible, I know, but it's the only analogy I can think of. You know, we have this thing just looking terrible. And so now it at least looks better. I can sleep at night. Let's tab into edit mode with everything selected on the low. And you know, all of this is clown town. Let us press U 
first of all, let's switch to the right image because we don't need to unwrap on our PRF. We'll just press U, unwrap. This thing, once again, has gotten a little messy. Let's select everything. And, we'll, and I mean everything. And we are just going to pack, to pack everything inside. And it's just done. Everything, wow. UV Packmaster does some very tight negotiating. I just can't get over it sometimes. So if we press Alt-V, uh, wrong, wrong one. If we press Alt-V and we go to Solid Texture Toggle, we can now see our mesh, where when we go back to our viewport, we Alt-V, look at our wireframe, everything is looking good. I'm proud of what we're looking at, for the most part, except for this part. Definitely going to be a pain in the neck. I feel like there is some deep pondering I need to do about how to get this to behave just absolutely perfect when it comes to baking. But we're just going to go and turn off auto smooth for this one because in my experience that just gives us a slightly better result for it. And let us select everything, go under settings, and we're just going to export the OBJ. And this is our iteration four. So in the piston demo folder, we're just going to call it 404 low dot OBJ. And let's go to our high. We'll select everything. And we'll also export an OBJ. Of course, this one will take a moment because it's the high. But we ain't afraid of no ghosts. Well, sort of, I don't know. I will run from ghosts, guys. And, you know, we made a mistake. We didn't name this thing. What is this thing? Roundy High? What's the one on the low called? Roundy, Roundy High? Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I would have a uh, polygon debug that would highlight versions of the mesh that are not properly named with the low counterpart. You know, just talking, just throwing random ideas out there. At this point, I'm like, over ideas, too many of them. Got to got to start <laughs> thinking about other stuff. Like I mean, I've been getting so mad at these sites. I'm like, man, I bet a hard ops could exist for substance painter, but you know, mm, don't want to get into that. Also, hard ops could exist in so many other applications, but it's 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 more like an initiative it's not even a specific workflow it's more like a workflow optimization based on you know personal repetition based on you know my personal insanity it's like god if i have to do this 109,000 more times than i've already done it i'm just going to i'm going to brain myself against my computer desk but we persist now we're waiting on an OBJ export, but we are done. You know, no need to panic. We are now finished. So that means that we can go back to Substance Painter. And one thing I want to try, I mean, one thing I love trying in this program is literally replacing my meshes and keeping my paint work. So let's see if that's actually going to be possible. This is the file from earlier. We're just going to load up our low. And I can just tell you, first of all, it's going to look very ugly. Exactly. It's perfectly ugly now. But that's fine. We go under our texture set settings. And because of the way that we did things, we can remove this high. And we can actually load our proper high and bring it in. And let's just bake it and see if we can just slide it in there and just replace what we did and pretend like you know, nothing happened. It's just us and a little substance painter having some fun, rebaking, baking the town. Really looking at this area. You know, this area has just been torturing me. You know, it tortured me on the modeling. Now it's torturing me on this part. You know, cut me a break. But if we look at this, I think this will do. You know, perfection is always elusive, but we will save this as, what is our file name? 404. This one's called 
four three. Let's jump this over to four four. I'm going to be deleting all these files because I need the free space for Steam games that I'm not going to play. Just kidding. So we rotate our light around. You know, things are looking pretty good, but we need all our screws back, right? Or else we can't put it on Sketchfab. So instead of making an entirely new file of this, we should just make a new not make a new collection but don't put it inside of a collection we just want to make a new collection below this and just call it screws you know even screws yo would be good but no time for jokes alt x we're going to mirror this over and do it just like we did before turn off mirror for parts And we don't actually need wireframe for this. We just need to listen to our heart, guys. And they all share the same UV space, so it just makes our day a little bit easier. And I almost don't think I've made that many jokes today. I feel bad. You know, maybe I'm sad. Yeah, I'm not sad though. I'm gonna watch a Cowboy Bebop. Let me get through it. I'm not very far on it though. And also I need to read the Wikipedia so that way I can really get the plot synopsis down. You know, I like to read the plot I like to read a description of what's happening in the episode while I'm watching the episode. That way I can uh, use Blender while I'm watching it and uh, just catch the, the, the main parts that matter, you know, the acting, you know. I was looking at some ships on there. It's like, you know, I might, I might pick, I'm, I'm a weirdo though. You know, I wouldn't do like the most iconic ship. I wouldn't do like, you know, the cowboy bebop ship. I would do like the pinball machine from like episode five whenever they just uh, win, well, every episode involves them getting shot at, but yeah, there was an episode where they getting shot at, and there was this pinball machine just for a split second, I was just thinking about it, I was like, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a pinball, right? that's a pinball, man, I'll, I'll model that thing, don't test me. But I'm telling you, eventually, this will begin to feel like you know work which is definitely what i want to avoid i mean i'm sure that's what the youtubers want i mean the, the youtube fans you know for me to just talk about the skills that i use for jobs all the time but god that's so boring you know go to a seminar <laughs> but when it comes to me i'll definitely try to talk about things that of course, I want to have fun with modeling. That's our goal with Hard Ops, is to make modeling more entertaining, not to make modeling more CAD-like. So, with this, we can now export this file. We'll export it as an OBJ. But yeah, you know, I always bring it to the team. I'm like, hey man, if you um, decide you want to make a make a tool against us you know cad box is a long-running discussion i mean i personally wouldn't want to oversee it because i feel that uh cad has probably bigger nazis than any other aspect of 3d and triggering them would just not be fun you know it'd just be this and that and this and that eventually it become a discussion about how blender is inadequate at so many things especially you start you can't talk about turning blender into cad and then not talk about t-splines and curves and you know the solids is just one part of things you know just saying the other part is is the uh you know i talked to ar about it. he's always talking about uh surface continuity and g1s and g2s i mean i don't even want to get into it but here we are now in substance painter and everything has been brought together and it really wasn't that difficult of a process in fact improving this piece just made the baking a lot easier so you know sometimes just remodeling it is just an easier way to live so we're just going to export this to sketchfab once again 
and you know it's easier every time yeah we're gonna get fast at this eventually we're just gonna be dropping in and out of this like nobody's business so this file is called piston 404 re-upload of tutorial result uh, you know that sounds that sounds pretty good and we're not updating an existing model we're actually replacing this we don't want to replace the previous version because that version was cool too unless sketchfab starts um, talking smack about me having too many uploads just twiddle our thumbs here just wait but yeah while we're waiting might as well just keep talking so yeah the topic of cat box you know I hope someone takes takes up that concept because I would love to watch it be done and just speculate on how it goes because you know all dreams in blender always end with speed it's like oh man it's feasible until you start talking about the speed implications it's like another discussion altogether but like i mean even you know four loops is like just so expensive and i'm not even saying that from experience i'm just saying that because everyone's always talking to me about it. they're like hey man we got these four loops and these four loops are what's choking it so you know if you do that you're basically or if you add what you're asking for, if we add what you're asking for we're adding xx four loops and it's going to get exponentially slower and that usually makes me relent like I'll, I'll um, acquiesce on some things by that point but before that you know I'll just keep going and keep going and keep going so I don't know not saying there's a limitation in Python but you know maybe someday they'll just come out and be like hey uh, this thing's like threaded through this GPU now and it's way faster so I don't know I'm just talking out of my butt but if that ever happens We'll be the first to capitalize on it. Be talking about making a 3D program inside of a 3D program. I mean, that's literally the only way to solve everybody's cat dreams. It's like you would have to literally use the pow power of Blender itself and the technologies it supports, like I don't know GLSL and all that stuff, to deal with it. But I'm not the guy for it. Seriously, there's like way smarter people on the team than me. I'm an idiot. I'm just the guy that tries to connect you guys with the product. So, you know, I get a lot of uh, people that are like, I can't follow you. You're too advanced. Like, I'm too advanced. Man, I'm like the front man of the band. I'm like the guy singing the lyrics. Hoping that you guys understand me. So if you all don't understand me, you definitely don't stand a chance with the other teammates because... You know, just, just, I dare you, talk to him about the depth, no, I'm kidding, but, yeah, you talk to him about the depth graph, see if you don't end up in a, in a fight in the alley over the depth graph, but, depth graph, serious business, where's my camera icon at? I don't know if I'm looking at a bug or what, but, anyways, we are done. We got in here and we saw, we, we conquered but the other thing is what about ABC files? Like what if we wanted this to animate like so? Because that would always be cool, right? Is to animate it just like that. And let's just try it. Let's just try it. I am going to save this file as what it is. And we're gonna save it again and put an A at the end. If you're a Patreon, you get the file, of course. And we're just gonna put an A on it and select all of our meshes and join them together. I know, a regrettable decision. We'll adjust the auto smooth. So everything so far is so good. We will take all of these meshes and this is how angry I am at ABCs is that I will literally just join everything together And I will just join it all. T I'll try to join it all together. Jeez, come on. Stop making a fool of me, Mesh. I need you to correlate with what I'm saying. So I'm the type of person who will now literally join all the geometry together before exporting out as an ABC because I don't want to deal with the crap we dealt with before 
where it just would not look right in the in the uh, ABC format on Sketchfab. Or no, it was the part where we had to click 184 times to fix all the materials for each and every single part ever conceived. That part was a hell on earth. And so I don't want to repeat it. So that's why we have this A file where we're basically merging it just for the purposes of not having to do this multiple times. It's like, how many times do I want to do this? You know, three is the maximum amount of times that I'll do this before I'm like, man, the heck, man, come on. You know, what would Biden say? Come on, man, you know, some of that action. So let's export this ABC. And how many frames do we have in this scene? We have 250 frames. We don't want that. We want probably like 40. Let's see, we just want one. Let's see, we start in, we end in. So 40 frames, you know, we don't need 250 frames. It's gonna make a big ABC file, but I love looking at an ABC file and seeing it be like 600 kilobytes. I'm like, wow. That shouldn't take up too much power. But what do I know? So, let us bring Sketchfab back up. And we are gonna just choose Upload. Actually, let's try this a different route. I'm going to go back to Painter. And There's a couple of ways. I'm thinking that we upload this to Sketchfab again. I know that sounds stupid, right? Like what is this guy doing? But we're going to call this four underscore four a, and we're not updating an existing model. We're publishing a new one. And with this new one that we're publishing, we're just going to replace it with the ABC file. And at least then we have the same model and the textures already up there or else we're going to be uploading textures separately, which I don't want to deal with that. In fact, what are we dealing with right here? Why am I waiting on this window? I do not want to wait on this window. So here we're just replacing our file and waiting for these 3D elves who are definitely working hard. All right, and it is complete. So let us now edit our 3D settings and see how we fared this time. Maybe we got lucky. But of course with our materials, we are unlucky. But we do have our animation. So that part is done. This part came in hard. So that part is worrying me. Let's go back to Blender and just double check. And this was definitely not exported hard. There was no auto smooth. We could add a normal and then try exporting it again just to ensure that we definitely get these normals locked in. But I feel that we're drifting into the realm of over obsession. So we only have three parts we have to do. So just one click, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and I won't count that 27th one, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 
73, 74, 75. 75 clicks later, we now have our materials added back to this object. And you know, that sort of thing, whenever it happens, in, in, in blend, like in Blender in general, the amount of clicks that things were taking, it was literally causing me a slight amount of insanity. Not to knock on Blender or anything, Blender is definitely optimized to be the best at everything that it endeavors to do or tries to, with room for improvement, of course, but there are definitely optimizations and workflows that can be had. And whenever I find myself finding out that something takes up that many clicks, I I just start losing it, you guys. I mean, I'm fine now, but I'm hot now. I, I got to turn on my fan because I just gave up 85 clicks to this SOB and I'm not entirely pleased with the result. I mean, it's not their fault. It's really ABC's fault, but you know, we look at what we exported out of SP and compare it to this and ABCs just hate me. I don't know what it is. Also with Bloom, I always add Bloom, but I turn it down to a level where people just can't even tell it exists. You know, it's all about dialing it back down. You just tell you, it's almost like you have to have a level of apathy with your art where you don't even care. I mean, you should care about it just looking proper, but uh, I'm still tripping out over the 85 clicks thing, guys. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to save our settings. But I just wanted to prove that, you know, it, last time I was talking about saving 185 and like uh, Proxy was asking me, he's like, did you count? I was like, dang right, I counted, man. That's why I said it, caught, it took that many clicks. I mean, even uh, even if uh, I was incorrect, I was being, e I was taking it easy because of missed clicks. But, you know, laser clicks, 85 laser clicks. That means you got to click on the right button every single time, like a speed run. But anyways, this is now our final result on Sketchfab. I'm going to forever ponder why ABC files just do me dirty. But with that, I can at least wrap up this video. Thank everyone for watching. You know, this model is the one true model. And we finally got it looking at least more adequate by refining this front area. So I'm at least proud of that. And I'll be able to sleep. Except I'm not going to sleep. I'll be practicing the next hydraulic. But with that, I can wrap up this video. Thank everyone for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.